Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is April and this is another in the core concepts video series for med surge nursing. Today's topic is going to be tissue integrity. Now, as a reminder, this is a back to the basic series where we really are just trying to understand what is going on inside the body so that we can better assess and manage clients with acute and chronic conditions. Now, when we think about tissue integrity, it is defined as the intactness of the structure and function of the integument, and that's going to include the skin and the subcutaneous tissue, and then also the mucous membranes. So when we think about tissue integrity, it's important to remember that the skin is the largest organ in our body, and it does serve three functions. So number one, it protects us from infection. Number two, it keeps fluid inside of our body. And number three, it does allow uh, fluid to be released in order to control our temperature, so diaphoresis or sweating in order to control our temperature. Now there are four interrelated concepts to tissue integrity. There is fluid and electrolyte balance, infection, nutrition, and perfusion, all of which we have talked about already in our core concept series. Now if you miss those videos or you need to go back and review those, they will be linked in the description box below. Now when we think about tissue integrity, it does vary from completely intact, which would be normal tissue integrity, integrity to impaired. And impairment is often due to an injury or a trauma of some sort. It can also result from an infection, a burn, a lesion on the skin, or just from inadequate peripheral perfusion that causes tissue damage. So when we think about classifying tissue integrity, there are two classifications. There is partial thickness, which is going to extend through the epidermis and dermis. So epidermis being up here as the top layer of the skin and then the dermis. Now, as we move down into full uh, thickness tissue integrity impairment, it's going to extend all the way through the epidermis, all the way through the dermis, and down into that subcutaneous layer. So all the way through these layers of skin. Now, unfortunately, with a full thickness injury, we can have exposed muscle or bone, which further leads to the risk for infection. Now, risk factors for tissue integrity impairment. So we know that older adults are automatically prone to tissue integrity issues. That's because as we age, our skin becomes thinner, it dry, it's drier, um, we have increased capillary fragility, which means our capillaries are more fragile, and so they will bleed under the skin uh, more easy, and then we do also see decreased arterial blood flow in adults as we age. Now, malnutrition also contributes, neurologic disorders, diabetes mellitus. So we talked already about glucose regulation. So diabetes mellitus can result in tissue integrity issues, peripheral vascular damage, urinary and bowel incontinence. So just those substances sitting on the skin can cause skin breakdown, also immune suppression, and then sunlight. Exposure to UV rays is another big risk factor for tissue integrity impairment. Now, our most common tissue impairments are those pressure injuries. Now, those can result from just happen at home. So from home care, um, whatever the client calls home, those can happen at home and the client can need to be admitted to the hospital or to an acute care facility in order for us to help them manage those pressure injuries. But we do also have hospital acquired pressure injuries, which are what we as nurses are trying to prevent when a client is in our care. The physiologic consequences of tissue integrity impairment. So we can, or clients can develop localized cellulitis or even worse, a systemic infection, which is sepsis. Also, tissue integrity impairment is often very, very painful, and some patients will have difficulty healing. So those patients with diabetes or altered perfusion, remember blood flow is oxygen, tissues, cells, organs need oxygen to survive. So if that tissue is not getting an adequate supply of oxygen or blood through perfusion, the patient will have difficulty healing those wounds. Now, from an assessment standpoint, we do want a good health history. So this is gonna include any acute or chronic conditions and current medications. For an, a skin assessment, we wanna look at color. We wanna look for any moles, lesions, then we want to look for excessive dryness, any excessive bruising, and then hair loss and brittle nails. Those are good indicators of altered perfusion that we want to be assessing for. 
Now, if your client is at risk for a pressure injury or you think they're probably at risk for a pressure injury, we need to assess that. And the brain scale is the most common way that we predict pressure injury risk. Now, when we look at the brain scale, the max score is 18 and anything less than a score of nine is a severe risk for pressure injury. High risk is gonna be 10 to 12, moderate risk 13 to 14 and mild risk 15 to 18. Now, if you're not familiar with the Braden scale or you need a refresher on what that scale looks like and how we use it as an assessment tool, I have linked for you and I will put this link in the description box as well um, for you to review the Braden scale assessment. Now, as far as documentation, if there is a wound that is already existing or as a wound develops, which we hope is not happening in our acute care facilities, but if it were to happen or if a client comes in with an existing wound, we do want to measure the wound for size, so in millimeters or centimeters. We do want to look at the color and document it. Also the depth in millimeters or centimeters. We want to note any drainage that is coming from that wound. And then we might also want to monitor our client's serum albumin and pre-albumin. Now think back to nutrition. So we've talked about that already on my channel, but albumin and pre-albumin are great indicators of adequate protein within the body. Now they both are indicators of protein. However, pre-albumin is best to manage or uh, manage, sorry, is best to manage acute changes in protein, um, whereas though both will tell us about protein in the body. And we know that protein is our best nutrient for healing. So let's talk about health promotion. How do we prevent tissue integrity impairment? So our primary focus is going to be on proper hygiene. So making sure that any uh, bowel or urinary substances are not sitting on the skin. The skin is clean and dry at all times. And then nutrition, really, really important that we have good nutrition in order to protect our skin. If your client is at risk, we do want to inspect the skin daily. So think about your clients that have diabetes mellitus and how we teach them to inspect their feet on a daily basis. And then we want to keep that skin really clean, really dry so that we can prevent any problems. Now, if your client has excessive dryness of the skin, we may apply some moisture, but we don't want to over moisturize that skin. If your client's immobile, we want to change their position every one to two hours. And then we do want to use uh, pressure reducing surfaces. So that might be a mattress or a pad or foam, whatever you're using to reduce pressure on bony prominences. We do want to be using those in clients that are at especially high risk or uh, are going to have prolonged immobility. And then we want to assess frequently for risk and breakdown. So again, using that Braden scale, there are certainly other skin assessment scales, although the Braden does tend to be the most common. We want to use that every shift. So you might be doing it even more frequently than every shift if your client is um, all at, at a super high risk or has already started to develop breakdown. Um, but traditionally, we're doing that Braden scale assessment every shift. And then minimize sun exposure. So your clients that are going to be outside in the sun, we want to be covering up um, any exposed body parts, wearing at least a 30 SPF, and then wearing sunglasses to protect the eyes. Now interventions, once we already have impaired tissue integrity, so adequate nutrition, I can't say that enough, adequate nutrition, that's going to be adequate protein and vitamin C, but also all of our other um, nutrients for healing. Medications, we might need antibiotics, whether that's oral or IV or topical creams. We might also use oral or topical steroids in healing. And then your patient may need chemical or surgical wound debridement. So as skin dies, we need to debride away that dead tissue in order to uh, promote healing of uh, the tissue that has, is not necrotic underneath. And then we may also need to open arteries that are obstructed to improve blood flow. Remember, blood is oxygen and our tissues do need oxygen to have um, to prevent skin integrity impairment, but also to heal those um, impairment issues. So we might need to open up some arteries. Okay, guys, that's all that I have for you today related to skin integrity. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the box below. However, you can certainly reach out to me by email, my Twitter account, and I can also now be found on Instagram at the Professor RN. I am posting daily on Twitter and Instagram. So if you are looking for a little more inspiration, help, 
practice, NCLEX practice questions, please do follow me on any of those social media platforms. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next Core Concepts video.